What's going on guys? How are you doing today? It's Angry Roll Player, you know, early in the morning as usual. And uh, today I wanted to revisit the Jade Harvester build, guys. The Jade Harvester. You know, uh, a lot of things have changed since the last, uh, since my last build. And I wanted to update it because, you know, the previous one seems like a little misleading now. Because it has different stats than it is used now on uh, the live clears. And I wanted to get back to it and just explain it from scratch. Uh, the current, you know, live version of the Jade Harvester. No, uh, a little. I want to tell you a little history about Jade. No, Jade was a very strong set back in the day, and I'm not sure if the leaderboards are still there. But we'll try to go back to season one and see what's in there. I think it was actually the king of season one. Let's see. No, oh, that's bad. That's this, this is all guys here. Yeah, so this is Jade was the king of season one, the very very first. You now when we had no cube, we had the setup like this uh, with uh, the unity and uh, the ring of royal grunt also that we could use the quest little coddle um, on us equipped. We we'll use the furnace. Uh, it was possible to use the wrath of the bone king and other stuff, but we used the we use the furnace here. So, <laughs> it's very funny guys, it's very funny, but um, th th this is on the setup what we use. And as you can see, Jade was the king of season 1, the very first season in the game. So that was it, uh, but now the setup is very different. We got the, the Endless Walk set, we got the Ring of Emptiness, this crazy shit. We get Lakumba's ornament and... Uh, the Battle of Transcendence, all that stuff, the Vile Hive, so the setup is very different from what it was, you know, four years ago. And I'll go and uh, start by saying that Jade is not easy to play, but it's very, very fun. And when you start playing Jade, you is now, now turning bad. It's either life or love or hate. It's the, one of the only sets in the game uh, that has no damage reduction. It's very glass cannon, it's very powerful, but... You know, it's very hard to play at times because it's very frustrating, you keep dying and dying and if, uh, without running without the damage reduction uh, build in the set is very problematical really. One of the only sets left in the game without the damage reduction is pretty crazy. We're we asking the developers all the time, guys, for fuck's sake, give us damage reduction. Jade is all, it's so hard to play, you know, it doesn't appeal to, to the audience because you know, it's more like an elitist version of a Witch Doctor build because, you know, only the best of the best played. It's so hard to play. Uh, so, damage reduction is, per is absolutely required for Jade to push into the higher uh, rifts and, uh, you know, to be more affordable, playable by the more, by, by more people over there. So, it's kind of, an you know, uh, Jade is kind of an elite in the Witch Doctor world. And if you... Uh, played uh, Jade uh, and can do you now a uh, greater if uh, say 90 in the season with Jade you can absolutely say you have mastered Jade you know it's very hard to play uh, it re requires a ton of reflexes and especially the the mastery setup with the commission of the elements is exceptionally hard to play so guys uh, <clears throat> let's get to the build and to the gear and I'll start explaining with the gear that you absolutely need for this build to work smoothly, flawlessly, like it should be. Uh, at first it's a full 6 PSD harvester set and let's read what the set actually does. 2 piece, when hound lands on an enemy already affected by a hound and instantly deals 120% seconds worth of hound damage. This is a 2 piece set and this means that when we attack with the hound uh, we release the spirits and uh, basically when there's already hound on the enemy we instantly de deal damage and this is like you no know, single target damage and also stacks being on the streaking really well so this is this is to be considered there's no, there's no like you know useless two piece bonus it's fucking amazing it's a damage dealer and it stacks streaking really fast four piece so Hallows gains the effect of every rune and has its cooldown reduced by one second every time you cast Hound or Local Swarm. Now this is the thing guys. Uh, it's not important what sort of harvest rune you have here. It's, it's, it's a, you know, you can use any, doesn't absolutely matter at all. 
we get every rune here and uh, when we cast a ha when we cast hound or local swarm uh, we reduce the cooldown of um, soul harvest by one second you see it starts refreshing refreshing it's really fast and in the past you know like uh, years ago and actually not as uh, quite some time ago uh, we stack a lot of cooldown reduction on the jade pieces everywhere we need that cooldown reduction everywhere and third and all it was like the, the, the way to go and it was like this for fucking years for almost four years and then people start realizing that cooldown reduction is more like you know utility and now the four piece gives us also cooldown reduction it's it reduces the cooldown of soul harvest so now we get about we, we better go area damage and people start stacking area damage and back in the day you know area damage was kind of a shady mechanics it was not really known well by people what what actually area damage does how it scales does it scale with da damage over time effects or like this and uh, does it actually translate to damage or what and people really underestimated area damage back then uh, and it's only the last year when people actually started stacking area damage everywhere in every build and <clears throat> jade is not an exception uh, before you know a year ago we had the the shoulders like this for example with intuit cdr and hound damage but now they look like this and with area damage and hound damage that's what you need now guys so this is all you need you need area damage instead of cooldown reduction everywhere where you can now the only cooldown reduction that you may need is here on the helm you can use uh, the diamond and it's the only cooldown reduction that you need guys so the, the helm should look like this and with and hit chance and uh, the diamond here you can use the amethyst here if you die too much. Uh, the shoulders, int vid, area damage and hound. The gloves, int vid, uh, int critical hit damage, chance and area damage, guys. Uh, the chest, int vid and hound damage. And also the secondary is really good if you have some kind of a, a reduction from ranged attacks or melee attacks, it's very good. The pants, int vid and armor. And also no, very useful is uh, if you have some kind of stun or life after each kill like I have on my pants. Uh, the boots, and with all res and armor. This like a new GG boots here. Now, now for the options guys, now for the options. Uh, the endless walk set buffs all our damage by 100% and it became absolutely mandatory for nearly every every you know uh, build in the game and it's, Jade is now exception. We stand still a lot, uh, we harvest and uh, we need to increase our damage. So the endless walk set should be the maximized damage you know uh, damage items that you can get with area damage on the ring. Uh, it should be like poison damage. Uh, we use we use poison damage in our build guys so poison critical hit damage and critical hit chance uh, if you want to ask why we hit critical hit damage and chance does it count when we soul harvest and everything else yes critical hit damage and chance also can, can you know kind of calculates during the harvest so it crits as well but it crits in the white numbers you will never see uh, you will never see the blue or uh, the yellow items, the crits from the soul house because it calculates everything and crits in the white damage. It was always like this. And the ring should be just critical hit damage, chance, and array damage, guys. I don't have the GG ring so far, so it's like this, but should be like you know, max damage that you can have. Another ring is an option. And. I will go a little ahead guys and start and say that I will consider free setups for Jade Play. Free setups from beginner setup, then there goes the master setup and then there goes and I'll come the expert. Uh, yeah, it's kind of an expert uh, setup that you can play on the very very high of the leaderboards. Now the, in the beginner setup, you should use items like this. You should use the wormwood in the cube. Where is it? 
guys let me find the warm up oh here so the beginner setup is like this you know why beginner it's not it's not an uh it's not weak it's just very easy to play and this is what i really prefer to play you know uh, i'm not exceptionally good at jade really you know i've played a lot of hours uh, on my uh, witch doctors and uh, i play thousands of thousands of hours on my witch doctors but i really like to play you no know, easy setup where i don't need to cast really as much and it will is almost as effective as the high you know a high clear setup so this is the beginner setup that I recommend everyone to play at first when you get uh, no starting to get used to the build and all that. One more than the cube, because uh, you, re you don't really want to spam uh, in a local swarm uh, a lot because it's of course 300 mana. It's a lot of mana. You will be out of mana a lot if you will be casting a local swarm. So. Wormwood just saves your mana a lot and you can just spam Hound uh, endlessly and uh, be fine. It spreads Local Swarm for you. So this is the beginner setup. Local Swarm, Quessel Coddle in the cube, bring the emptiness in the cube and the Unity guys. Unity, this is for solo play and you should also keep Unity on your follower. And basically Unity just doubles your toughness and this is the setup that almost the setup that I was actually used to, to in the 98 clear on the leaderboards uh, last season. It's actually amazing guys. Uh, as for the belt, it's the belt on transcendence uh, for beginner and for and for and for you know master uh, and for master setup. I recommend using the belt of transcendence. You know when we spend uh, how, when we spend mana cast town and local swarm we spawn the fetishes and fetishes are our meat shields. And um, when you will watch the clee and we will actually start playing the game, you will see how naked you are running around. You know the enemies and they hit you from all over the screen, all these ranged mobs, everything wreck you to fucking pieces, guys. It's very problematical to survive. And when you are one to one face to face with the Rift Garden, that's where the real problem of Jade begins because you don't have much, you know, so harvest stacks, not much damage reduction from the Kumba Zonimit. And if the uh, Rift Guardian has no ads, it doesn't spawn anything, you're really running naked. And this is where the fetishes, they are just tank shit for you. They occupy the Rift Garden and this is where it really helps guys, it, it's all, it will save you like a lot of pain in the ass, a lot of pain through the whole Rift, uh, the fetishes will just tank all the uh, affixes, all the melee attacks of the Rift Guardians and all the uh, elites and everything like that. So they will just tank stuff for you and this belt is kind of priceless in my opinion. It just, you know, saves so much pain, so much pain. So, uh, the beginner setup, guys, is the Wormwood, a Unity and the Belt of Transcendence. This is, this is how it should be. Uh, now for the weapon, uh, it's the Sacred Harvester and the roll should be like holy damage. And, oh no, 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 doesn't matter what damage you have. You have uh, the damage, flat damage, intelligence and area damage. And area damage is your t first top priority that you should have here. Is this is basically just the maximum DPS sacred harvester that you can get with the area damage, guys. This is it. Uh, on the module, there's a couple of the that you may use. Uh, the best is vile hive, and you know why I like vile hive because first of all, it increases the damage of the local swarm by a lot. And Locust Swarm is quite a considerable amount of, da of damage in our build. And also, uh, Locust Swarm gains the effect of the Pestilence rune. And we can have a different rune here on the skill bar. And the best rune that you should wish you'd use is the Cloud of Insects. It gives us a 25% debuff on monsters. And basically, uh, they deal 25% less damage for us and this is very very important the higher that you can go and the great rift you will need this absolutely so we have the pestilence rune so we have uh, we can have different rune here on the skill bar 
we have the massive buff to our local swarm damage and it's quite a great mojo quite a great mojo guys for this build and um, the stuff should be like this int vit critical hit chance and hound damage hound damage is preferable guys here but you know this mod is for my uh, fire bats uh, are here so i don't really want to spoil it it's so hard to roll anything here absolutely very hard to roll so uh, in a perfect situation you might even have two rolls here like area damage and the hound damage this is like a fucking gg roll you will drop your vitality here unfortunately you will be super glass cannon but for the max damage you will need arrow damage and hound damage if you don't have both roll hound damage 50 50 percent hound damage is always better than 20 percent array damage this is like it another option that you may have here is a headless acquisition it's quite a good mojo that it appeared and all uh, I know like five five patches ago and the first time an enemy deals that damage you reduce the damage by almost 80% and charm an enemy for two seconds now you know this like a very very strong debuff that the enemy gets when he hits you for the first time and you know this time is almost uh, uh, it's almost good and uh, if you kill the enemy right within the, this three seconds but uh, in my opinion uh, Vile Hive with the Cloud of Insects is better because you know uh, it just gives you a, a debuff for the first attack and during the three seconds the enemy just doesn't attack you but this Cloud of Insects with the Vile of Hive first of all Vile Hive gives you the damage for pestilence it's a lot of damage and also uh, we have the debuff of 25% reduced damage all the time not just for three seconds not just the first attack we get this debuff for for now for all the time for everything for during the whole rift so up to the 80 percent damage reduction uh, uh for the first attack or 25 percent damage reduction for the whole rift i really recommend using the cloud of insects guys and the vile hive i think that's that's more important than the henry's acquisition henry's is great and if you don't have you know a very good vile hive but have Fucking amazing Henry's with the Hound, he chants and all that stuff. Use Henry's, it's not bad at all. And the Great Reef 100 on non season have been, have been done with the Henry's actually. So it's not bad at all, it's actually possible to use this, guys. So, as for the Bracer, the only Bracer we may need for this, uh, for this build is Lakumba's Ornament. And the roll should be like poison, int, vit, and hit chance, guys. This is the only bracer we need. And this is basically all our damage reduction. Uh, Sacred Harvester. Soul Harvest now stacks up to 10 times. And the Kumba's ornament reduces all damage taken by 6% for each stack of Soul Harvest you, you have. So we just run with 60% damage reduction, guys. And this all I always wife. This is it. Unity adds another 50% damage reduction that we have with our follower and it, with Unity it's, mu it's so much easier to play, you know, it's much safer. So I recommend playing with Unity for a lot of time until you can switch to your, you know, um, to your expert level of, um, to your expert level. Now to the harder options guys. The harder options look like this. We switch Wormwood to the furnace to the furnace in the cube where the fucking furnace here yeah, i lost it again oh it's here so this is like you know uh, a master a master setup with this setup not many things changes except the furnace in the cube but we have to ha to cast a you know, local swarm now and local swarm is very very hungry hungry skill yeah we'll show you guys you one cast and we already lost 300 mana two cast we lost more with we're starting hound cast again cast again no we have to cast a uh, local swarm when we reposition and go to the next screen still and i really don't like casting local swarm that's why i play with this beginner setup forever you know <laughs> uh, 
but the higher the great rift uh, and you absolutely need furnace damage for elites you know elites take so much time in this game and uh, you know the furnace becomes mandatory for the high, if you want to go for a really high great rift now this is guys this is like the master setup we just switch Wormer to the Furnace, we still have the Belt of Transcendence and Unity and the Vile Hive here as well. And now guys, for the best of the best setup, the Super Glass Cannon of it all, very hard to play, but it gives you the higher Great Rift clear fuck in the fucking universe. This is the setup guys, this is the setup. And this setup is with Convention of the Elements and the Haunted Girl as well. We switch to the unity to convention of the elements, and we change the uh, the belt to the haunting girdle. Now haunting girdle is purely DPS belt. Haunt releases one extra spirit, and basically, when we when we start haunting shit, uh, we we do instant two piece bonus damage. We just release two hounds instead of one. And we instantly deal 120% damage with the, with the two-piece bonus. That's a lot of DPS, that's a lot of single target damage, guys. That's a lot of damage. Uh, but, you know, losing Battle of Transcendence, we lose our meat shields. And we are kind of, you know, running with naked balls on fire. Uh, between the Rift Guardians and between all the monsters, the elites, they hit like trucks. It's very, very sketchy setup, very hard to play. But and only you know the best of the best will play this setup and succeed or not succeed. So uh, in convention of the elements, we need to hound specifically on the poison as much as possible, guys. We have the poison rune here, and when the poison is ready, you need to you need to soul harvest like crazy, and it is, will do fucking insane amount of damage. This is the maximum damage that you can that you can get from this setup. That's pretty crazy. And Convention of the Elements should also have stats like this. Critical hit damage, hit chance and area damage. In my build I have area damage prioritized between everything else. And this is there for a reason guys. Because you know you should have the emphasis of area damage in your mind all the time when you play this build because you know area damage is very important area damage is 20 percent chance to deal uh the damage when you hit the enemy with any attack and it also corresponds to the hound damage local swarm damage soul harvest damage everything and the ticks and everything else everything procs area damage absolutely the damage over the time ethics also proc area damage so it kind of ramps up and as a result you can have ridiculous amount of damage for the rift. Like as you can see I have 150% area damage and I really want to have area damage on the ring here so that I do have 170. But you know <laughs> I don't have the ring with area damage for now unfortunately. So this is it guys. This is it. Now, uh, how actually the whole shit works, guys. That's very important to understand. And, uh, you know, Jade is kind of you know, a miner or an explosive man or a sniper, if you call him. You set up a bomb and then you explode it. That's how the build works. Uh, I will read the, the, uh, the sixth piece again. The sixth piece. So harvest consumes your damage over time effects on enemies, instantly dealing 300 uh, seconds worth of remaining damage. Now, guys, it's a very complicated shit, but I will try to explain for all you know players out there. First of all, what is the damage over time effects, guys? Damage over time effects are skills that do damage for you know during some time. For example, hound. Hound an enemy with a spirit dealing uh, 4000 weapon damage is called over 12 seconds. 12 seconds, it means that this 4000 it just kind of spreads across this 12 seconds and it deals some kind of portion of this damage every second. This is damage over time, this is what it is. A local swarm is exactly identical 
Local Swarm unleashed the Plague of Insect, dealing 1040% weapon damage as poison over 8 seconds. So it deals some posh potion of the damage uh, every second. And now, it all works with the combination of two skills, guys. Why eight? Why 300 seconds? If you ask me, how can we consume 300 seconds if Hound, you know, only only lasts, you know, 12 seconds, and Locus Swarm 8 seconds? Where this 300 seconds come from, guys? And they all come from this passive Creeping Death, Creeping Death, and Quest Coral. These two, these two items, they work in, you know, in uh, combination. And this is allows us to do massive amount of damage. I'll explain this in detail, guys. Creeping death, your hound, local swarm, and damage amplification from Piranhas last almost forever. But here's the tree, guys. It's not forever. It has been calculated that basically with this passive on, your hound and local swarm last for 60 minutes. 60 minutes, guys. Instead of, you know, 12 seconds, this poison spirit, this hound, it lasts 50, 50, uh, 60 minutes, guys, 60 minutes. And you will ask me, that's fucking ridiculous amount of time, you know, our rift is 15 minutes and this skills last for 60 minutes, what the fuck? Yeah, guys, because specifically the six piece consumes like five minutes out of it, five minutes with every hound. Five minutes with every soul harvest, we consume five minutes of damage over time effects. So basically, what happens? We cast Hound on an enemy, we cast Locus Swarm, the damage of the time effects starts running, and they run for, for you know, 60 minutes. And then goes the Quest Cuddle. Quest Cuddle, Locus Swarm, and Hound now deal the damage in half of normal duration. What it basically does is just compresses this 60 minutes into 30 minutes, guys. So it's now it's now it's 30 minutes. It basically doubles the damage of Hound Locus Swarm to cut it short. It basically doubles the damage of Hound and Locus Swarm. So it compresses the damage over time effects. And even if we we drop the the creeping death here, uh, with the quest cordal. Uh, the Locust Swarm will, will deal damage in 4 seconds instead of 8 and Hound will deal damage in uh, 6 seconds instead of tw uh, uh, 12 seconds, guys. This is how it works. But with Creeping Death passive, like I said, we have uh, our dots working for 60, for 60 minutes. And instead of 60 minutes with, with Quest Cuddle, yeah, they are last for 30 minutes. And basically 30 minutes and we consume 5 minutes and uh, 30 by 5 minutes we can have 6 soul harvest and then we consume all, all the dots. That's how it works guys. So the maximum that you can have is 6 soul harvest and then you consume all the dots from the enemy. And this is when you uh, should actually reapply Hound and Locust Swarm. So this is what's like this guys. You run around, you cast Hound and Locust Swarm, then start harvesting once. Then you have a second time. Then you start harvesting no third time. Then the fourth time. Basically, and then the fifth time. This is how this is how you do. And then you should re reapply Hound Locus Swarm again. Reapply Hound Locus Swarm again, and then start harvesting again, guys. This is it. So uh, the dots expire, and these six soul harvests, they, they are still not six, they are around five. So five soul harvests, and then you need to reapply Hound Locus Swarm uh, to the enemies. So this is how it works, guys. I explain a shorter in, in short again. Creeping Death amplifies the Hound and Locust Swarm and they last 60 minutes instead of, you know, seconds. Quetzalcoatl compresses this, this uh, 60 minutes to 30 minutes. And 6 piece bonus from Jade Harvester consumes 5 minutes of damage over time effects on the enemy. 
and this is basically around five soul harvest so this is it after five soul harvests on a single a single enemy you should reapply hound and local swarm this is how it works guys now I will go a little over the cube as well. As you can see, this is the this is the master setup here: conviction of the elements, haunting hero, and the last thing in the cube that I uh, the last things in the cube that I uh, haven't explained is the ring of emptiness. Now, the, this ring has been introduced several patches ago, and you deal 300% increased damage to enemies affected by your hound and local swarm. This is basically increased uh, the damage of Jade Harvester by a lot. And also then it kind of transition to the uh, fire beds build as well. But originally I think it was intended to work you know, for the Jade. And basically this is the, oh, the solely reason why Jade became viable. This ring, this is because Jade is viable. It does so much damage guys. This ring should be always in the cube. Always in the cube unless you have a really good ring of emptiness with a critical hit chance damage and area damage as well but it should be here guys now for uh, for the for the skills guys hound poison spirit this is the only rune that you will need uh, the enemies it's a, it's a buff so enemies take 20 percent more damage from your attacks that's very important on the right button local swarm cloud of insects cloud of insects guys now this is a debuff 25 percent debuff guys like i said and if you will be playing without uh, the vile hive, you will you will sh have to have pestilence here instead of clown of insects. Unfortunately, it's like this. If you don't have vile hive here and will use with the Henrys, for example, you should need a pestilence here. But with the vile hive, uh, you need a cloud of insects here for a debuff. On the first button, spirit spirit walk severance or jaunt doesn't really matter i prefer jaunt here as well it just gives me an unhealing movement for three seconds and this is kind of a little trick for the spirit walk as well because you can actually tank you no know, frozen f fixes with this if you see the frozen shit growing on the ground at the very end of the animation just spread spirit walk and you immediately survive the frozen explosion this is how it works now on the second button, Soul Harvest Language, like I said, it doesn't really matter what skill, what rune you use here, it's absolutely no, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, use anything here, or no rune at all, like this for example, it doesn't matter at all. This is our nuke, uh, we need 5 harvests to do on the enemy, then we apply Hound and Local Swarm. This is our nuke guys, we consume all uh, the, the dots on the enemy with this skill, and this is how we do damage. Now on the third button, Pir Piranha Spiranado guys, this is the amplification, affected enemies take 15% increased damage, this is the amplification, it's a major buff against the enemies, and also it's a fucking insane grouping skill guys, it's a grouping skill, and it was, uh, it was a skill mandatory for, you no know, years and years, and it's absolutely the same after, you know, almost 5 years, we still need Piranha for grouping enemies, guys, this is it. Horrifier Threading in Aspic. Now this is one of the most interesting skills that you can have for additional uh, toughness. Not only is it uh, you know, horrifies enemies causing them to be immobilized for 3 seconds, but also gives 50% additional armor for, for 8 seconds. That's very very important guys. Look at my, uh, look at my shit toughness here. See the toughness increases because I get additional armor. It's quite important because you no. Know, like I said in the very beginning, Jade is very squishy, you need all toughness that you can get from everywhere. And this is pretty mandatory, guys. Now the passive, the passives are all set in stone. There's no experiments here, absolute no, guys. It's very, very, no firm set of skills that you should use. Confidence Ritual, 25% additional damage and it's a global multiplier. We're always inside the enemies, so this is the best skill that you can have here. Creeping Death, this is basically the, you know, the crucial skill to use for this build. Without this skill, the build just will not work at all. If you don't have skill, you will do no damage. Spirit Vessel. Now, Spirit Vessel, your second life, I really recommend to play with Spirit Vessel, but, you know, the best of the best players, they can actually play without Spirit Vessel. But it's very sketchy, very sketchy, guys. 
You can use Pierce Veil or Jungle Fortitude here or Swamp Lab Entunement, but I recommend Spirit Vessel all the time. It's pretty mandatory, no, you can, uh, you, if you proc you or, and you don't die, you just don't die, you still live. And you have a cool, uh, you know, in, in between the 15 minutes across the rift, you have 15 times second life across the rift. That's very important, guys. And Graven Justice. Graven Justice is an absolutely mandatory skill as well. We gain 1% of your maximum life and reduce the cool, uh, life and mana and reduce the cooldown of, by 1 second when enemy dies within 20 seconds. Basically, when, they have, when we have a ton of enemies, we can just completely refresh our soul harvest again. That's how it works. It's called the chain harvesting. That's the gravy justice is mandatory for this build to work. Absolutely must have, guys. Absolutely must have. Now a little, a little uh, for the gems. The normal gems are diamond and hell, and you can have uh, the amethyst here if you wish. Everything else is to pass, guys. The legendary gems are being the trapped, esoteric alteration, and uh, the being of stricken. These are the only three gems that you can use. No other gems is better, guys. Don't even try to experiment with these gems. I don't build in stone or something like this. And the last thing that I want to say, guys, is about uh, the the gameplay of Jade. <clears throat> now, Jade requires quite you know, an interesting composition of monsters. It requires a lot of small monsters to die really fast to refresh uh, your soul harvest for for graving by the graving justice, so they, they could harvest. And over and over again chain harvest and destroy these fat mobs inside the small mobs and in the past you know when there was 98 clear uh, it was just a zombie rift the zombie rift was grotesque that uh, all you could is the best you could get for uh, the previous jade now the great rifts have greatly changed you know and it's very hard to fish for the for a rift like this but you know the skeleton rift with some golgors or the hulks or some fat mobs and the small mobs so this is you will need as a mix of small mobs for to proc graven justice and soul harvest and the fat mobs that will actually give progression so this is kind of a very very you know a rare kind of rift that you can get for the jade for for this build to box now guys this is it i think i explained everything if so everything area damage where possible instead of cooldown reduction guys Sacred Harvester, Vile Hive, uh, Endless Walk Set, Lakumba's Ornament, Hunter Girl, all the Battle of Transcendence with the Battle of Transcendence preferred for the beginner players. Also the Unity or Convention of the Elements. Convention of the Elements for the higher grade Rift and Unity for everything, for everything else guys. And in the cube, for the higher grade Rift you need the Furnace and for the lower you can just use uh, Wormwood and save your mana. Guys, this is it. Thanks for watching guys, see you soon on the next adventures.